Well, they are already awake. They heard this giggling blonde coming down the road and all the cubs popped their head up and were wondering what was going on as Taylor came past us. So she didn't even see us. We were just north of her and we were watching her come past. And it was funny because we could hear her from far and then the sound got louder and louder as she was laughing down the road. It was very funny. But these lots, you can see there's a bit of scratching, a bit of grooming going on. And this is quite typical of cubs they have when they have a little bit of mange they will scratch a bit and you'll find that they will groom each other but they are starting to wake up and they've been very cute there's been grabbing of ears and tails and rolling on top of one another and you can see it's all kind of a big lion pile at this stage and there's only one adult lioness that I can see I don't see any of the others maybe the rest are lying somewhere in this deep grass but so far it's just one I'm not sure this morning how many Taylor had but it's only one that I can see at the moment, but look at that. It's just a bundle of joy. Look at that. Now that's what you would call, not surround sound, but surround car wash. Oh, paw in the face. Look at the size of those paws already for such a small cat. Now, the main job we're talking about is those little patches that you see there, and it's not something to worry about just yet. Like I say, the Inkuma Pride, when they were around this age, the little cubs looked a bit like this. It does happen when they're a bit smaller, but they're already old enough that I think they'll be okay. The older cubs look much better. You can see there's one of the older ones. So Andy, you're asking how do the lions get rid of mange? Well, they never get completely rid of it. That mite is naturally occurring. In fact, even us as humans have some of those mites that do live in our hair sometimes. So it's a naturally occurring thing and they will all have a little bit of it. But it's when the mite gets out of control and that's normally in the dry conditions. So in the winter times you see it presenting quite often and you get these outbreaks of it. As soon as there's a bit more moisture coming along and their immune system gets a little stronger and they groom themselves and they stop rubbing up on one another as much as what they're doing now you'll find that that will all start to go away and it will start to get better and that's why the older they get the generally the better it gets quicker because they no longer lie in piles like that and always kind of on top of one another and that then stops this mite from spreading too much from one to the other and they just groom it out and eventually then goes away so they'll be okay like I say they're much better off than what I've seen the Styx Cubs last year and even the Inkohuma Cubs were looking a little bit like this at the end of the drought last year and that's cleared up enough now and the Styx Cubs I mean the Inkohuma Cubs look just fine so you'll find with the Styx as much will be the same you can see look at mom she's almost completely healed they had it quite badly as well and she's much better off so I would imagine the Cubs will get there eventually Ooh, mom's tail is now time for a game and this is what happens when the kids start waking up it's now time to pull tails and to play and to chase one another around and look you can see they get a bit angry with each other from time to time there we go and all this play will be vitally important for later in life when they are tackling bigger animals the, all the kind of techniques that they've practiced by being cubs and playing around with one another will become very important later they'll have the sort of way to grab another cub they'll be able to you know, use those paws and those mouths to be able to effectively bring down the prey that they need so or to defend themselves should they get in a situation where they are being attacked by another lion yes hello you now this little one closest to us looks like a young male he's already see he's getting a little bit of a mohawk going on the back of his head there so I think he's a young male I thought I saw little testes when he was on his back I can't remember now clearly but it looked like he might have been a young male and it seems with the sticks that they do produce a lot of males in the time that I've known the sticks a lot of the cubs have been predominantly males and I remember all the cubs last year that unfortunately died of the mange of the eight cubs six of them were males so it's just the two females out of the eight and they then all passed away but prior to that it's been a lot of male cubs and that's why the sticks pride has shrunk over time there's been no females really coming through the ranks and surviving to allow the pride to grow and it's getting to the point where it's getting a little desperate hopefully these cubs will survive and that there are some females in it and the sticks pride will continue because it's one of the really the oldest prides in the sabi sands in terms of what we know and prides that were followed and monitored from early on they were one of the first prides that were really kind of put on the map of the sabi sands so it would be a real big shame if the pride itself disappeared and, and was no longer so I'm really rooting for these cubs and they've done so well to get to the age that they are and 
hopefully the Birmingham boys will continue to stay alive and to protect this area and allow for these guys to get into a mature age that some of the females will then be able to start breeding and the Styx Bride will continue. So, Nisha, you want to know what age the lion cubs stop suckling milk? Well, some of them are a little cheeky and will try and suckle for as long as possible, but generally they should stop suckling at around eight months, although I have seen a male lion that was almost two years trying to suckle from a mother that had her new cubs. So it does happen sometimes, but generally around eight months they are completely weaned and on meat. So these guys will already be eating meat, but they won't be completely weaned. The smaller ones, the bigger ones for sure, they are going to be off milk now and will no longer be suckling. But it's so nice that they're actually awake because often you get to lions and they're fast asleep, particularly on a hot day like today. And after being chased by Ellie's, I'm sure they were a little bit on the sleepy side after being interrupted on their nap. So nice to see all the cubs up and moving and playing and look at those eyes, are they not just yes, beautiful. You can see the big black tufts on the back of the ears. I always think that a lion's eyes are, or well, cats in general, even the leopards, when they look at you, it's almost as though they can tell exactly what you're thinking and they almost analyze you and as though are you something that I can trust in that they be able to sort of work out exactly who you are. It's probably not anything like that, but it just feels that way. They seem to be able to bore into the deepest part of your skull when they stare at you. Now, one of them, probably the female, given the size of her belly, seems to have decided to pass some gas, which is quite common after eating. So if they did steal a meal from Asana this morning, like Taylor was telling me, it smells definitely like she's just let go because it's not exactly a pleasant smell that's wafting downwind right now. And that's generally when they let go of a little bit of gas, and it's often after they've eaten that this happens. It's particularly bad when you sit with a group of males after a buffalo kill. You've got to be very careful about where you park because otherwise this horrible scent comes and it almost burns your nostrils. It's so bad. It's really very unpleasant and you will smell it from time to time. So it hopefully means that this female will stop sort of dropping gas because we are downwind and hopefully she'll get up and move onto the other side of us and then we won't have to worry nearly as much. Of course it could be the cubs too. Oh, look at them, there's one that's on its back kind of just staring at us. Isn't this cute? They are so cute when they're in big sort of clumps like this and playing with one another and grooming one another. They are some of the cutest little things in the world. Right, well we're going to carry on and just enjoy our time with these beautiful lions because well, spotlights aren't used on them just yet, so we can still stay with them because of our infrared. And I believe Taylor has got something that is not a snake, but well.